All right, we're going to get started again. Okay, cool. Next talk. Next up is me. All right, yay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I am Mickey Delp. And I'm going to just talk about rabbits. Um, it's a, kind of a crazy deep subject. Uh, so like, I'm just going to cover some interesting bits. But man, there's so much. Um, so this first uh, slide, the title slide actually has some cool rabbits on it. On the right is a comic book character called Usagi Yojimbo. And it is a uh, wandering samurai uh, or, or bodyguard Yojimbo. Um, and, uh, and he's a rabbit. And I love that comic. And on the left is a fairly obscure comic uh, called Bucky O'Hare. And uh, that is first appeared in a, an anthology comic in 84. And um, I, I bought it and fell in love with it. But it's, it's got a weird history. Um, even was a cartoon for a little while. Maybe you've seen it. I don't know. It's a really cool book, though. And uh, there's several different reprints, so you can find it. And he's fighting against the Toad Empire, um, which is actually really interesting. It ties into everything ties in. That's how this works. So um, Rabbit in the Moon is kind of uh, a whole thing. And we are actually already heard two stories from Kevin <coughs> um, from the Aztecs about uh, Rabbits in the Moon. And there's stories in a lot of cultures, uh, primarily um, uh, in uh, indigenous American and, um, and uh, Eastern uh, cultures that have this concept of the, the rabbit and the moon. So on your right, you see uh, the moon with the, the sort of silhouette of the rabbit uh, and the, um, the mortar and pestle. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, so the, um, and on the left is a uh, tapestry of basically the same thing. That's Chinese. In the, the Chinese uh, rabbit in the moon is, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I am just getting over a cold, or I guess I did a few days ago, and I'm still a little <coughs> So the um, rabbit in the moon is grinding herbs, um, making a potion of immortality for the gods. And uh, in the, some of the earliest uh, Chinese uh, poetry that refer to the rabbit and the moon. Uh, oh, and also a toad links back to the um, Bucky O'Hare fighting the toads. There's a toad in the moon and a hare in the moon. <coughs> and so um, the, there are a lot of stories in, in a lot of cultures that are uh, remarkably similar. There is a very similar story to the one Kevin told. Um, that is in the, the Buddhist uh, stories. <coughs> and um, it's about a, a, a rabbit and a monkey and an otter, and they decide that they're going to do a really good deed because um, they think that by doing that, they'll get a, a great reward. So, um, and they go, and this is uh, for the, the new year. Well, they, they, they go out and they encounter someone <coughs> Uh, an old man uh, who is uh, poor and hungry. And so they say, well, this is our good deed. We're going to feed this man. And the otter goes and, and finds some fish, and the monkey pull, gets some fruit from the trees, and the rabbit is like, well, all, all I know um, how to do is, uh, is harvest grass, and that, that's not good enough, but, but I will give you my body. And jumps into the, to the uh, campfire. Uh, the rabbit does not burn, and uh, the um, old man, it turns out, is a bodhisattva and um, takes the rabbit out of the fire and draws the image of the rabbit in the moon so that for all time everyone will see the light of the rabbit and uh, know his sacrifice. So kind of similar to the uh, um, Mesoamerican tales. And there's a whole bunch of things. In some of the earliest uh, writings, the, the rabbit in the moon is referred to as the jade rabbit. And um, in fact, in poetry, the term jade rabbit was used to mean the moon, <coughs> sort of interchangeable. 
So, hey, the what is that in Chinese? It's something like YouTube. And that is the name of the Chinese uh, space programs, lunar um, lander, um, that is a, a robot that's on the moon right now, U2, and U2-2. It's named uh, Jade Rabbit. So these rabbits in the moon, they're just all over the place, um, all over the Americas, um, in the Canada, the, the Cree <coughs> have a story about the rabbit in the moon that's almost the same. Everybody seems to come up with this concept. So it's, uh, it's really fascinating. And, uh, oh, so, right, we've been talking hare and rabbit. And uh, so no, what's, what's the difference? Well, skipping from mythology to morphology, uh, the biggest difference is their shape. Um, hares are bigger, and they have bigger ears and longer legs. And like visually, that's the big difference. Um, they also have different, uh, you know, uh, behaviorally as well. The, um, um, they, hares nest above ground. They're loners. Um, they sometimes uh, forage in pairs, but mostly uh, all by themselves. When they lay, um, uh, when they create a nest, that's above ground as well. And their babies are born uh, full hair and vision. <clears throat> because they're above ground and they have, uh, they have to watch out for predators, so they have to be ready to go earlier. Rabbits, they go underground for both nesting uh, and, and living, and they live in colonies, very social animals. Um, and their babies are born little pink, hairless, uh, closed-eyed babies. And they uh, are more dependent on the, the mother. And, um, but... Uh, they grow up fast, <laughs> about three weeks, the rabbits are ready to go, and they're out, and they're on their own hunting, and the parent is, has nothing to do. In fact, rabbit parents aren't that uh, cuddly. They, um, they only uh, feed the babies once a day, so, so the mother will be out and uh, getting food for herself, and then she'll come and uh, give milk to the babies once a day, and that's like, um, that's it. But um, their milk is extremely high in nutrients, uh, even compared to most mammals. So it all works out. Uh, oh, yeah. So in addition to hares and rabbits, uh, there's another thing called a pika. And these things are really cool, too. They're in the same order, um, uh, lagomorphs. But uh, they're, they're in a, a different family all by themselves. And uh, they're uh, only native to the um, mountains of the Midwest North America, I mean, uh, far west North America, and the western <coughs> uh, or eastern uh, mountains in uh, Asia, like China and Mongolia, small area. Whereas uh, rabbits and hares are everywhere. Um, there are a couple of places like uh, Australia where they were not native and uh, humans brought them in and they've caused huge problems like any invasive species. But mostly they're everywhere except like the bottom tip of South America and of course Antarctica. And, um, but these guys, they have very small area and they're called pikas. And no, um, Pikachu isn't a pika. I mean, that was my first thought, right? But no, um, Pikachu, uh, his, the name comes from the sound that a sp an electric spark makes and the sound that, uh, that a mouse makes, like uh, the squeak of a mouse. Choo, choo. So Pikachu is a lightning mouse. But the look of it actually, according to the creator, uh, comes from squirrels. So it's kind of a mouse squirrel thing. Oh yeah, so this uh, family, Lagomorphs, um, that's the, the uh, order that pikas and, and uh, uh, rabbits and hares all belong to. And so uh, <coughs> what, what makes them unique? So, um, they, uh, so the, the name Lagomorph that kind of means, uh, looks like a hare, so. Um, there's a bunch of species, but 
Surprisingly, not that many. <coughs> yeah, pardon my cough. So, um, by contrast, rodents, which, you know, they're not, but they were originally thought to be rodents because they're very similar. They do have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. Rodents um, are the most uh, populous um, mammal. So that the order of rodentia has thousands and thousands and only 100 um, lagomars. So they're not rodents. And some of the things that makes them different from rodents and, in fact, different from all mammals is they've, they've got these uh, four ever-growing incisor teeth. Uh, rodents have two, and they're, uh, they're orange, and rabbits have four. And uh, yeah, they continue to grow, and they have to chew on things um, <coughs> pardon me, to keep them uh, in check. But uh, that's actually a backwards way of looking at it. They don't have to chew on things to keep their teeth uh, in check. They have to chew on things to eat. So they're always chewing on things and wearing their teeth down. That's why they keep growing. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're strict herbivores, unlike uh, rodents, which are omnivores. And um, they have no toe beans, uh, no pads on their, on their feet. They're, they're, it's just fur. So that's, uh, that's unusual um, as, uh, for all of them, all, all mammals, not just comparing them to rodents. Oh, also, uh, rabbits and hares, the female uh, is larger than the male which is extremely rare for mammals, but that's the case. Um, and, all right, so here's the weird one. Uh, so they're uh, monogastric and uh, coprophagic. And so monogastric means that they have uh, basically one um, uh, alimentary canal, uh, like humans, for instance, and unlike ruminants, like um, uh, cows and such, that chew their cud and they have multiple stomachs and so forth. Um, and generally, you know, we think of cows, they chew their cud, so they eat the grass and then uh, it goes into one of their stomachs and then they sort of regurgitate it and chew it some more and then swallow it goes back into another stomach. And, and that's weird and all because, you know, we don't do that. But it, it, you don't find it like that gross. Uh, rabbits eat their poop. That sounds gross, but it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> uh, here's a really bad diagram. Um, so they <laughs> eat <coughs> and chew on the grass, and then it goes through uh, their, um, the, f the first phase. It goes through their intestines and then into the uh, cesium, which is a, a separate area. <coughs> and so they're called, this kind of animal is called a hindgut fermenter. And there's a lot of, horses are the same way. They do that too. Um, and so, the, the food sits there for a while, um, like about three or four hours. And then uh, overnight, um, what they do is that comes out. And it's uh, very different. So they have uh, feces that comes out, and it looks like a rabbit turd. And the other thing that comes out looks more like rabbit feed, if you know, like what you would feed a rabbit uh, if you had a pet. And so they, that comes out, and they eat it immediately. And then it goes through the, the process of, of their intestines again. Then they get much more nutrients out of it. Um, all of that's like because they don't have um, the enzyme required to, uh, to digest cellulose. And cellulose is the, the cell wall around all plant cells. And that's what they eat only, is the plant cells. So they can't digest it without this weird process. In fact, inside the, the body, uh, they don't, as I say, they don't have the, the proper enzymes. So it's actually, um, they have a, a very complex um, uh, gut flora that um, has microbes and yeasts and various things that help digest their food for them. So yeah, uh, dinner's weird if you're a rabbit. Uh, oh, speaking of dinner, they don't like carrots. No, that's not a thing. Um, and we all know why we think they like carrots, and it's because of Bugs Bunny. But um, Bugs Bunny wasn't uh, trying to be, um, you know, correct. Uh, he's just not like a biology teacher. He was, uh, Bugs Bunny always was all about pop culture. So Bugs Bunny was actually making a reference to a extremely uh, popular Clark Gable uh, movie 
that people of the day, when they saw Bugs doing the uh, what's up, dog, while he's eating a carrot, they would know that reference. It was a, a pop culture reference of the 30s. And so um, that's why Bugs Bunny eats the carrot. And he just kind of kept eating it. And now everybody thinks that bunnies eat it. Don't feed bunnies carrots. They don't like them. Can't digest them very well. And we all know that they don't, can't digest anything very well. So what else? Oh, yeah, so, the, so words. OK, so I told you this was stream of consciousness. So words, where do these words come from? Rabbits and hares and bunnies and crap? So um, I mean, rabbit comes from uh, French. Um, word, uh, rabbit, essentially, uh, which means uh, not lapin. It, there's two different words. So uh, usually you think, uh, if you've studied French, you know rabbit is lapin. But that's an adult rabbit. Um, the word uh, rabbit, is uh, robot, is uh, a uh, baby rabbit. And that came uh, to English through the French. And originally meant baby rabbit, not adult rabbit. So that was the our term in English for a baby rabbit. Um, and the word hair uh, comes from like the rest of Europe. Uh, it comes from the German and Dutch and uh, various other languages that all have the word hair. And it's, it comes directly uh, from that. And so the um, there's a couple other words there. Uh, we like to say bunny rabbit. So what, what's, what came first? Well, turkey, because they came from different places and they mean different things. And uh, related, bun, which is like a cutesy ooh -woo word for uh, rabbits, right, on the internet. Uh, but nope, that's actually the oldest word <laughs> of all of them, is bun. So that's the, the, uh, the OG term for rabbits. Um, and that comes from, well, it's hard to say. The etymology of that is not entirely clear. It's Gaelic, uh, it probably. Um, and uh, there's a also a, like there's a Scottish word that means stump that's bun and it could have come from that and so forth. Um, uh, so it's a little tricky, but bun is actually uh, what was used to refer to an adult uh, rabbit, and rabbit was the the child. And then um, bunny uh, actually happened uh, over time, and at the same time. The meaning switched. So now we call the babies bunnies and the adults rabbits. And that's a little backwards. And what was my other question? Oh, yeah. So what does Coney Island have to do with all this? Ah, well, that's uh, another word for an adult rabbit. Uh, in fact, before the word rabbit um, was used more commonly in English, an adult rabbit was called a Coney. And yeah, the New York. Um, Resort town is Rabbit Island. So, oh, complicated. Oh, yes, and we saw this in the first one, too. The dreaded rabbit of Kairbanog. And um, uh, I assume, given the high nerd population here, you know, you know how the bit goes. And, uh, uh, speaking of words, Kairbanag is doesn't exist, but it's a uh, it's a actually perfectly legitimate <laughs> word. Uh, it's Welsh, clearly, um, and uh, Kair it means a place with a castle, and Banag would mean uh, turreted. So it's a, the place of the turreted castle. Um, so somebody wasn't one of the Pythons Welsh. I think one of them was. Anyway, Jones. Yeah, Terry Jones was Welsh. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's a perfectly legit name. But the whole idea of like a crazy rabbit, you know, uh, attacking knights. I mean, wow, how'd they come up with that? Well, um, they didn't. Uh, that was a common thing. It was a huge theme of rabbits attacking knights. In um, <laughs> every basically illustrated manuscript or illuminated manuscript of the Middle Ages, there is all this marginalia, um, little drawings at the edges of the page that, of, of rabbits, <laughs> most of them engaged in battle. And uh, as you can see, it's some of the details here, they're lopping off heads and 
carrying swords and uh, bows and arrows, and they're, uh, they're tough. It was a very strange thing. And um, it, it wasn't the, the idea of the rabbit as the fierce warrior um, had a weird sort of moment in time. That wasn't like common. That <laughs> it's not like, well, I guess that's what rabbits mean in European uh, folklore. No, not really. They, they mean what you think they mean. Um, uh, fertility and um, uh, frivolity and all the things that you would expect from rabbits that we kind of give them uh, those associations today. That was what it was. This is just a strange thing, um, but it's a big deal. Uh, they are all over the place. And it, this also occurred in uh, tapestries and even in heraldry. There are, there are plenty of um, crests that have vicious rabbits on them. So, oh gosh, man. Okay, so here's, here's the last one. All right, this one, um, this is a huge, incredible story that uh, you just like go look up. There are two documentaries about this. So like I'm squeezing it in at the end of a 20 minute rant. But this was amazing. So there's a book called The Masquerade. And um, the author uh, set out to create a mystery uh, treasure hunt and drew uh, this book with a beautiful uh, artwork and had a, embedded in it a mystery about real places in England. And as part of the whole thing, created himself um, being not just a, 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 a painter, but also a, a jeweler, created this um, beautiful piece of jewelry, the masquerade hair, and uh, put it inside a ceramic box and buried it in a secret location that was uh, pointed to by the book. This book was huge, it was a big hit, and uh, it, uh, it was several years before anything happened with it, but uh, people were um, trying to figure out where it was, and people were digging in various places. The author actually had to um, uh, pay himself to put up signs because so he didn't get sued. And uh, so you put up a sign, no, the, the hair isn't here. And so people were searching all over for it. And it, because it, you could theoretically figure this out without being in England, then uh, he said that well, the winner will be the first one who, who mails me the, the solution. Well, it gets really weird. So from there, I mean, it just creates this huge scandal. So the, the story, and again, I could really go, it would take 20 minutes to go through the whole thing, but it becomes a scandal. And there's a winner, but it's tainted. And oh, man, it's really good. I mean, even if you just read the Wikipedia article on this, it's a great story. So, crazy rabbit stuff. And uh, that's it for my rabbits for now. <laughs> All right. Well, not quite it. Not quite. Because we have uh, rabbit ears. five sets of rabbit ears. So, I don't know if, uh, <laughs> um, so over the last few weeks I've been <laughs> reading a lot of stuff about rabbits, you know, and so not everything is in this. So I do actually know a little about rabbits, so if we do want to do a Q&A, uh, whoever has a really good question will get a set of ears. We're, we were doing Twitter questions. <laughs> what, are there any questions on the uh, the Twitch chat? Uh, okay. Well, the um, the person on Twitter cannot win. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we have no Twitch questions. But go ahead, give the Twitter one. Got to be present. Ah, see. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is how we'll do it. Lewis, what's your question? Uh, can you discuss the phylogeny of jackalopes? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Excellent question. And it wins you ears. 
jackalope is a, uh, a jackrabbit. Oh, neat bit of trivia about jackrabbits. They're hares, not rabbits. Yeah, jackalope is a jackrabbit being a hare and an antelope um, that through some unknown, unholy union have created our Texas mascot, the jackalope. Do we have other questions? All right. So I have it on good authority that Bucky, Captain Bucky O'Hare, does things no ordinary rabbit would dare, but how did a green rabbit character come to be in space? Oh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I don't know that. Sorry. Uh, I don't know the story um, uh, of uh, how it was created. No, it was. It was actually a story that was kicking around a long time. The the two creators created it in like 1977. It didn't actually get printed until 84. Um, but I don't know why they made him green. Sorry. So um, do you get ears for that? I don't know. Audience, ears? <laughs> All, right. All right, well, I have questions for you. Why don't we do it this way? I got a rabbit trivia. Some of it's some of it's hard. I'm gonna go with the hard ones. So, not not like who who wrote Peter Rabbit. Nah, hard ones. <clears throat> oh, all right. Very difficult one. So, uh, the hat I'm wearing sort of an amalgam of uh, the Mad Hatter and uh, the White Rabbit uh, from. Um, Alice in Wonderland. Well, another person at the Mad Hatter's, or creature at the Mad Hatter's table is the March Hare. And everybody at that table is a bit crazy. So, here's the rabbit trivia question. Why is the March Hare crazy? Yes. Rabbits breed in March. And? Sex crazy. <laughs> yes, I will give you credit for that. You get yours. <laughs> hares, um, <laughs> yeah. So the the March hare, uh, hares actually look insane in March. They run around in circles. They fight each other, literally getting up on their back feet and boxing each other, like. They look completely nuts. So, mad as a March Hare makes perfect sense. Mad as a Hatter, I think we all know, comes from the fact that Hatters used uh, mercury in the felting process, and it drove them insane for real. All right, all right. Oh, here's a, you gotta know your rabbits here. All right, what time of day are rabbits most active? Hands? No? No, you, no, you three with the ears, you don't, you don't get another answer. Yes. Yes, correct. Dusk. Specifically dusk, not as much dawn. They, um, the rabbits are, are diurnal, meaning that they, they are awake during the day and sleep at night. But um, they are um, uh, um, corpuscular, which means that they are most active at dusk. So, very good. Ooh, one more set of ears. I got, hold on, let me find my hardest question. Oh, I got some tough ones here. Hmm. How often do rabbits blink? All right, somebody put your hand up, make a guess. We're going to take one answer. Who's got a guess? Nobody? All right, go ahead. How often do they blink? This is probably wrong, but once a day. 
<laughs> no, sorry. Obviously, the question exists because they're weird blinkers. Um, and they, they don't blink that often. Um, they blink about 10 times per hour. Um, whereas humans blink 10 to 20 times uh, a minute. So it's like way, don't get in a staring contest with a rabbit. Don't do it. You lose. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know. I should I make an easy one? All right. Do rabbits purr like cats? And if it's not a yes or no question, you have to say why. No, nobody knows. I'll give you this one. All right. Nobody gets these ears yet, but uh, sort of is the answer. They make a sound that sounds for all the world like purring, but they're not. They're grinding their teeth. And so rabbits gnash their teeth, and it sounds like they're purring. But it's not as bad as it sounds. They are actually quite relaxed when they do it. If they're making that sound, it is a lot like a purr, because they're uh, relaxed and grinding their teeth. <clears throat> All right, what, when, uh, when was the first uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon? What year? No. No. Uh, not 29, not 33. One more guess. Somebody get close. Not 48. <laughs> very close. 19. <laughs> no, I already said very close. 38. And you get the last years. <laughs> all right. That's all. That I, I do have other rabbit trivia. I don't know if any of it's like... Uh, interesting, but whatever. I mean, oh, how high can a uh, cottontail rabbit jump? That's a great one. Any guess? <laughs> they jump high for their size, but not six feet. <laughs> they jump three feet. How far in a single leap? How many feet? Guess? <laughs> More? <laughs> Rabbits. Ten. They can jump ten feet in a single leap. That's amazing. Did you have a question? My question for the audience is just a really quick one. Anybody know the, the greatest rabbit in the Star Wars universe? It's a long friend of, of Han Solo. He's green. Nobody? His name is Jackson. Uh, and he was, a, they, they did a parody of the Magnificent Seven, and he was on the team with Han Solo. And uh, they refused to admit he exists, but he's canon as far as I'm concerned. But, <laughs> but my question for you was what is your favorite fictional rabbit? Uh, my favorite fictional rabbit. Um, yeah, and why? Well, uh, I'd, I'd love fictional rabbits. Uh, I, I do have a lot of favorites. I put a couple up in the front uh, of the um, the uh, the slideshow, and those two are, are some of my favorites. But um, the white rabbit from uh, Alice in Wonderland is probably my favorite rabbit um, because I identify with that rabbit. Uh, just curious, but also very nervous. Uh, and harried, uh, and I, 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 I get that. So that's, that's my favorite one. And that is all the rabbits for tonight. Thank you. Wow. <clears throat>